Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. I'm Amina Omar, Data Analyst and Community Coordinator of Audita. I welcome you all to the Women in Life Tech session. First of all, thank you all for taking time out and joining in. I hope you will enjoy the session throughout and will get great insights today. I'm so proud that after over a year, we are rebooting the much left Women in Life Tech session Audita with even more empowering sessions hosting expect, uh, inspirational ladies, we are thrilled to announce our first guest today, Ms. Ganma Alamgir Khan, who is also uh, one of our many accomplished audition uh, veterans. Let me give you all a brief introduction of our today's guest before we ask her to uh, show her presence. Ms. Ganma is currently working as a quality control at Odetta and as a business development manager at Yivu Barak IMX. She has also worked as a freelancer e-commerce business consultant in the past. With the help of Amazon PL, Ganga has not only empowered individuals and small businesses, but has also assisted them in selling products on them and touching multiple horizons. With her extensive knowledge of the Chinese market, yes, today you will all learn much more about Chinese market. She has uh, 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 also arranged logistics and she has provided consultancy and educate people uh, regarding that. So Ganma wishes to overcome the barrier to women's entrepreneurship world, especially in the Mesa region. She'll share her in-depth industrial knowledge and educate us all on how anyone can begin their entrepreneurship journey. So guys, embrace yourself to know that how you can start your e-commerce business with just 100,000 rupees. Yes, you heard it right. Even uh, less than 100,000. So over to you, Ganma, for all the tips and tricks. So how are you today, Ganma? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. How are you, Amna? I'm good. I'm so glad that we are able to do this session today. So are you ready? Let me ask you yes, the first question. Definitely. Our audience is waiting. Yeah, I'm so, ready. Yes. Ganma, we would love to know that how was your childhood? Like, do you think? Okay. So how was your childhood? Do I you have a, any defining memory of I your mother one. or father? A wonderful childhood um unfortunately my father died at a very young age when i was 12 years old um he was a businessman and a biggest my biggest inspiration and after my father my mother took over and uh, she started her own clothing line despite all the odds and criticism she listened to her heart it was a time where there was no um, no not entrepreneurship and not much women were doing anything but she proved herself and she i i she was my biggest she's my biggest inspiration she, she still is and um she run, run uh, she was running her own clothing line and uh she did this for years and one thing i really loved about mm -hmm. her was like she used to provide quality products over quantity and i think that's one thing which i've taken from her that i try to provide quality products um uh, within uh, the client's budget, I try. I try to. Uh, so so that could be like product. really, yeah. That could be really hard at that time if she has started business when there were no social mediums. So how she it used was. to do marketing and stuff like that. So now we know that from where you got your inspiration from. Yeah, she 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 still is because yes. she did what I believe I wouldn't have done at that time. Mm -hmm. So she used to sell clothes to Gilgit Baltistan. Yeah, she used to send clothes to Gilgit Baltistan. It's a remote area. And um, at that time, we didn't mm -hmm. even have a good logistic system. Uh, so uh, she tried, mm -hmm. she used to uh, work within the timelines and she used to provide them really beautiful and quality products at that time which are not accessible to, or not mm, much accessible to people over there. Yeah. Mm, that sounds that sound really interesting. Yeah. So, Ganwa, we would like to know that what exactly is e-commerce? Like, you know, why it is such a hot topic of 21st century? And not okay, just that, we my... would also like to know that how did you start your e-commerce business? Okay, that's my favorite part now. E-commerce... Um... It's like selling products, selling your services virtually, like with no human contact. 
and mm-hmm. as as you know that since the world is transitioning and there's been a lot of change after the pandemic and even during the pandemic a lot of people were um there were a, a lot of people faced a lot of problems so a lot of people were coming towards e-commerce but they had no idea what it really is what it really was and um, the people who started and who who gained a little knowledge um they were benefited from it so it is a it is a hot topic and why it is important especially for women because um this is something which you can do from the comfort of your home you're buying and you don't need mm. a big investment you don't need a space you're not spending much uh, you it's cutting your costs this is something uh, which anyone can start anyone can do from anywhere you just need a laptop you just need a stable internet good internet you just need your phone for that you buy products online mm. you sell so, them online mm. yeah that that we know about e-commerce right but we were really confused like how we are going to start it like you know what's the first step okay like i i'll tell you a small story about myself how i started sometimes you get opportunity uh, good opportunity mm-hmm. i a few years back i went to china and for me the chinese market was a big opportunity i explored the chinese market mm-hmm. and i when i explored the chinese market i saw a lot of opportunities over there i started with no investment what i did i just did a little marketing mm-hmm. i just told people about what the market is and how it is over here and like people have a misconception that um, you can only buy in wholesale in china no uh, i i believe that the retail market is uh, they have big online uh, websites over there like just like just the way we have diraz mm-hmm. over here we have uh, because mm-hmm. if you're going to start with 100k of a small amount so i believe um, you can buy in retail you don't need something in bulk uh, you can buy 10 exactly. products 20 products to test test that product mm-hmm. like what if that mm-hmm. product works in the market or not yeah okay so yeah that um, makes sense because you, you know start before with, starting a business yeah you need so you before need starting to an, uh, do a trial run you need to do a trial run and i can tell you about good websites over there uh, one is taobao i used mm-hmm. to buy um, products from there and one is jb.com i started a small uh, business mm-hmm. for uh, for a friend and it was a shoe line and i did not buy in bulk mm-hmm. i didn't because when when i went to wholesale so um it was quite expensive for me because i wasn't going to buy in bulk i just needed two or three pairs mm-hmm. um in one size one product one so what i did yeah. i went to the retail market mm-hmm. and still they were cheaper so we need to know uh, yeah. we need to cut the barriers and we need to know about mm-hmm. uh, we need to know more about the chinese market because we have only one concept exactly. about wholesale yeah you're right so yeah that's really interesting anma so um my next question would be like we would really like to know now you have talked about china right so you have spent almost 3 years in china if i'm not wrong right yeah i was three, i was there for yeah years. so we would like to know that uh, how was your experience there like uh, were there any cultural shock I, or language barriers i had a, i had a great experience in china obviously there was a cultural shock a little cultural shock and uh, language was the biggest barrier for me there were people who used to mm-hmm. uh, travel with um, translators i never traveled with a translator exactly. i wanted to learn the so language so how would you manage uh google translate was my helper initially <laughs> and then slowly and gradually mm-hmm. when i uh, learned how you do you com- communicate daily or how do you communicate with the trader over there and even they have a, mm-hmm. you need to have a big negotiation power uh mm-hmm. they you need to negotiate with the prices with them and uh, when mm-hmm. i learned it i used to enjoy going and buying things from them chinese i believe mm-hmm. is not it is somehow a difficult language but not much because i learned it over yeah, the yeah so uh, uh, yeah so how long did yeah. it take you to learn the language it took a year it took a year 6 months to 1 year to so you seem fully to be a really smart girl because we often think that you know it's a, like one of the most difficult languages so yeah but i was very so much so you have given us a hope 
my, that we can if you have an interest in something, if you if you have interest in something, you can overcome it. Mm -hmm. You can you can do exactly. it exactly. Exactly. So, is there anything more you want to talk about China, like their food or you know what sort of uh, production the areas food, do they the have? The food was much. I, I since I since I said earlier that I I belong to the Gilgit, but I belong to Gilgit Baltistan. I'm from Chilas, mm -hmm. uh, district Amal. Mm -hmm. Um our food is somehow similar to them. If anybody, uh, if mm -hmm. people have visited Gilgit Baltistan, they must have eaten these noodle soup and dumplings. So they're very famous and that's yeah. their um, mm -hmm. most common food in China. So for me, the food wa wasn't, um, it wasn't so a much So food is not a big problem over there. That wasn't a big problem for me over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was somehow similar. Okay, okay. So now coming to like, what would I, yeah. So coming to our next question, like now we know that you have told us what an e-commerce is. So how would you encourage women to start an e-commerce business? And that being just 100K, like we have mentioned this in our title that, you know, now you're going to learn that within 100K, 100,000 rupees, how you're going to start a business. So disclose, Anma, it's your time to disclose some tips and tricks. And people who are watching us start taking notes. She has a lot to tell. Okay, so um, one thing I would like to say, don't start a business if you don't have any knowledge about it. You need to do a deep market research. Number two, don't go for a product mm -hmm. which everybody sells. Do a market research and check what the market demand is, what the market is demanding from you. You can just look at yourself. You can like, maybe you need something and that is not available in the market. And maybe that is something which is in demand. Maybe you need it. That is something with, Secondly, don't go for seasonal products. What a seasonal product is, that is something which is only used, for example, if you go for winter clothes, that is something which will only be used with, for three months. What will you do after that? Nobody's going to buy winter clothes after that. So you need to be uh, very witty and you need to like um, see that w you need to select a product which is used throughout a year. And um, mm -hmm. after that, always. So small can, you give, commodity can you give product. an example? Can you give an example? Okay, like for example, a, for example, a pizza pan. If you take a pizza pan, that is something which is used widely mm -hmm. at a household item used by everyone. Always choose. I I mm -hmm. believe you should choose a household item. Or uh, these days, if you mm -hmm. see, um, these uh, people spend a lot on decor and at weddings, at parties. You exactly. can always choose yes. decor items. Uh, right now, the hot uh, mm -hmm. product or the hot item which I see in the market are artificial flowers. They are used a lot in weddings oh, yes. in, in a very big quantity. And uh, mm -hmm. trust me, uh, you don't find them in the market easily. Mm. So this and is if, something you're, which Are you I talking mean, about artificial flowers, right? You're talking about artificial yeah, so that's a great idea because pattern. other uh, flowers are perishable. Other flowers are perishable. Exactly. You're going to use them only once. So that's a great business idea. And this is something which is reusable. This okay. is something which trend trend will never yes. go. You can always transition exactly. it with different so, flowers and with different things. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ganma, uh, can we source them from China? Like these flowers? Very easily, very easily. And one more thing I would like to tell that... Um, it's like you don't source mm -hmm. all the products from one city. There are different cities for different products. Like I can say that just as I mentioned, the mm -hmm. small commodity products. Yiwu city, I was in Yiwu city is a Zijiang, in a Zijiang, a Zijiang province. It's uh, next to Hangzhou. Many people know Hangzhou. Maybe they don't know about Yiwu. That's mm -hmm. a small commodity market. That's the biggest market for Christmas products. And like you mm -hmm. can find any small commodity over this by small commodity i mean uh, the household items any small item always invest in a small item rather than going with big, big items like i can tell you that gonzo gonzo it is good for um clothing sh uh, shoes handbags which go to european mm -hmm. countries us canada and um uh, us canada australia mm -hmm. And then we have Shenzhen that's mm -hmm. famous for electronics. So you should always buy the product. You should always choose the product from the manufacturing city. Then we have different city for flowers. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So you so, suggest uh, that we need to buy things from the manufacturers, not from the trade. No, you should never buy it from a trader. The trader will not give you a quality product. You don't know what he's going to sell. Secondly, mm-hmm. they're not trustworthy at all. The traders are, and they're going to sell you an expensive product because he himself is buying from the manufacturer and selling it to a third party. He's a middleman. Mm-hmm. You have uh, mm-hmm. filters on Alibaba. Yeah. So and, and it and also that, and you, you yeah. can put that. Uh, you can put that, and you should. You will, you will find. You will know it yourself that who's the manufacturer and who's the trader. Exactly. That's a great point. And I would like to ask you again about the sites that you have mentioned. Is it Taobao, right? From where you can get um, Taobao? Your... It, is, it is in Chinese, yeah. but you, it is in Chinese, but you can always use a Google Translate. One thing which we still have to overcome is like we, mm-hmm. you still need an agent for China. You still need someone who is already in China. You need someone for logistics. Uh, you need someone. Uh, as per my market research, logistics is the biggest problem in China. And um, then we have Taobao, mm-hmm. it's in Chinese. You can translate it in English, but again, then you still need someone uh, who have good knowledge. You need an agent over there who can buy you a product or who can test your product because so China has multiple can one like, like how can we have an agent over there? Is there a way? Is there a way we can have, a, a, um, have an agent over there? I have, I have a lot of, uh, I myself working, where we uh, working as an agent. I am myself working as an agent. I have my connections. I have my people over there. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been working with a company over there and uh, I so people uh, can to, so, people, so people can contact you right definitely definitely I can give you an advice what product because I have connections with the factory since I've been I did not leave uh, when I came back to Pakistan I did not leave my connection I was still in contact with and I was still working mm-hmm. for people and I still am working for people then I started working for Amazon mm-hmm. I started uh, providing mm-hmm. uh, uh, products to the uh, people who had stores on Amazon in Pakistan. And mm-hmm. I used to uh, test products for them because it was very costly for them to order products from, uh, order samples from China to Pakistan. Then there was uh, a lot of problems with uh, exactly the logistics, mm-hmm. with, the, with the logistics. And they used mm-hmm. to order products from China and it used to cost them 10,000 rupees, 8,000 rupees for one to two kg mm-hmm. products. I found a solution to it. Exactly, I had people yeah. in China and I used to test the product within China instead of ordering it to Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Then I used okay, to so testing used, used to, to be done there. And the testing and inspection used okay. to be, uh, was done in China because for Amazon, in Amazon, you don't order the products to Pakistan. What you have to do is like, mm-hmm. you, have to send the, uh, the, you have to send the product from the city where it is manufactured mm-hmm. from your way you're buying it mm-hmm. because you have to send it to Amazon warehouse in USA, uh, UK or Canada. So you cannot mm-hmm. physically check the product. So you need someone to check the product exactly. for you over there mm-hmm. rather than order, ordering samples. So, from so, so yeah, you consult people as well. Na? So if anybody is interested, they can get uh, in I contact do. with you. So yeah, so you have Definitely. like proper Definitely. information regarding this. Okay, that's that's really <clears throat> great. Definitely. So, so yeah, Ganma. So let's just say that if I intend to start an e-commerce business, and let's say I, I have the money too, so what am I going to be like initial steps for that? Okay, your initial steps would be that I would like you to go and check Alibaba, or you can check Amazon mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. uh, for different products, the hot selling mm-hmm. products. You should check mm-hmm. maybe. A product might click you, which you might think that the market needs and the people, mm-hmm. maybe it, it can be in demand. So you need to select a product first. You need to see what you need to do your market research. So I can tell you Amazon uh, is a good place to select a product. Uh, Alibaba is mm-hmm. a good place. If you want ideas, you can take ideas from there. Okay. And So uh, after then we that, have to do the market research if that thing suits in our area as well. And if it if the yeah. product is long lasting and stuff like that, so then you have to find your manufacturer. Yeah, you then you have to find your manufacturer. Mm-hmm. That's the crucial part because there's a lot of fraud in China. That's what I said. We still need people in China to help us mm-hmm. because yes, if exactly. you want to play, you cannot if trust you want them. To, you can you cannot trust them. You can be lucky. You can be lucky, mm-hmm. but still you cannot trust them because 
even if you're buying something for fifty thousand rupees, you 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 cannot trust them. Mm-hmm. You're giving an investment. You're giving your investment. Mm-hmm. So, so you need um, to have like so agent is important. Yeah. So the age, agent is very important. You need someone of your own because slowly and gradually with time you will learn yourself. You need to test mm-hmm. yourself on Alibaba as well. You look for manufacturers mm-hmm. who are eight years, five years plus uh, on Alibaba. It's not that it's completely mm-hmm. fraud. A lot of people do business on that. A lot of people, not everybody has an agent. But uh, you need mm-hmm. to learn the tactics of Alibaba. You need to find mm-hmm. the right supplier for yourself. Once you find the right supplier, you send an inquiry to that supplier. Then you order mm-hmm. a sample. And maybe you want to customize your product. Maybe maybe there's some modification you want to make. So you, mm-hmm. you, you can also talk about it. Plus, for example, if you need a different packaging, you can even do that. Mm-hmm. Within China, you can ask for a different packaging from them. They can even customize yeah, and package it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, I believe I think that um, you need. Um, uh, I don't. I think you should not order more than twenty or thirty products for for testing. Mm-hmm. Testing is very very important. It's like if you order in bulk a hundred products, and what if they don't sell? Mm-hmm. You need to test the market mm-hmm. first. Exactly. Because still you're not sure about the uh, quality. Because why I'm emphasizing on quality? Because I don't compromise mm-hmm. on quality. I literally don't. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's the. You can say that you know that is really important for the long-lasting business. If you're compromising exactly. on the quality, maybe for one or two year, maybe more than that, your product works or your business works. Then it has it's to. It's really like, hard for you to quality. even sell a, a product which is of exactly. not yes good quality. Which, would you buy a product have any words, right? with, with, You're right. with, with quality? If its quality is not good, would you buy a product? Exactly. No. So you should no, not even not sell it. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. an advice. That's, that's a mantra. Uh, yeah. Never sell for all the business entrepreneurs. Yes. Yeah. Never sell a thing that you are you yourself is not going to buy. So exactly. better make quality products. Exactly. Okay. So now I'm yeah. going to ask you a question. Like we you know China is a hub of business and export products all across the globe. But why do you think like China-made products have a bad reputation, especially in South Asian countries, particularly in Pakistan? I would say. So, what do you think? Because the our, because our businessmen, our, tra- our traders, uh, because I used to, because uh, there were a lot of clients who used to come to China and they used to go and look for a third quality product. They used to buy things in bulk over there, like they used to buy the like last. Quality product over there for Pakistan because they knew people are going to buy. But mm. I, what I what I mean is like in people in Pakistan they don't have a good they don't have a now they do but they didn't have a buying power. People were not buying expensive mm. products and if they was exactly. China associated with it, they used to say, "Oh, uh, it's from China. Why is it so expensive?" All the best qualities go to European countries, US, UK, and Canada. I mm-hmm. bought shoes from I bought shoes from China once, and people. It's been four to five years, and people still remember those shoes, and they still wear it, and they still ask me because I used to buy UK and US quality products over there. I knew the market. Mm-hmm. So there, so there are different like you could say categories like A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. A, B, C, D, yes, to- and Pakistan brings a D quality. They bring a decoded product to Pakistan. Unfortunately, unfortunately, but that's them. so. Uh, the so the reason behind it is because of the uh, trader himself. Like we are the persons that all the businessmen, right? They buying Who as are per buying the demand. Cheap they buy, they products, buying right? Okay, they're buying as per the demand of the people. What they're doing is they're buying as per the demand of the people. They're not just looking at one class. They're looking at different class. But mm-hmm. I think. Even if you raise uh, raise it a little bit, you can buy a better product. Mm. Why going for so the least maybe quality? Product? Over here, people are used to. Maybe people over here are used to buying those products. That's why you know businessmen are also uh, importing them. In yes, bulk. people are used to it. But uh, now people, I see now people are transitioning. People, people are people. Mindset yeah. is changing. I I don't like it because why, of why the buying people... power as well, right? Yeah, okay. I tell you about a. I tell you about a brand, Pat Pat. It's a clothing brand. It is manufactured in China. Mm-hmm. It is delivered from China all over the world. 
uh, a friend of mine thought that Pat Pat is manufactured in UK. She or I was visiting UK in March and she ordered Pat Pat clothes. She said, you have to bring me those clothes. I was there for a month. I never got the clothes. And when I checked the receipt, I told her, this, this is coming from China. Why didn't you order it to Pakistan? It was a nearest country to order. Okay. So now, so now you have also surprised now you have also surprised me because I used to think that the Pat is a UK based company. No, I have ordered few for my kids as well. It's, so it's manufactured now in Shenzhen. Got to know and, it's it's delivered from, and it's delivered from Shenzhen. It's not delivered in UK. From Shenzhen, they deliver it all over the world. This is a very big misconception. I want to clear all the mothers out there that you can also order from Pat Pat from China, directly from China. You don't have to ask someone from UK or US. Uh, Ganma, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. It was a bit, it was stuck. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. So, yeah, where were we? We were talking about, like, you know, about bad, bad clothes. Bad, bad clothing. Yeah. In Pakistan, they have advertised in the US and UK. So, everybody is believing that it's been, they have shops over there. They have nothing over there. If you order it, they're delivered from China. Really? So, it is like, Okay, so it it has no link uh, from UK you can or go China to their app. Uh, UK or no, USA. No, no, they have no store. They have no warehouses over there. I have to, I have checked every each and everything myself. I did my research mm -hmm. on it because I really they don't have a good mm -hmm. quality, so but they have is a really design. nice nice design clothes. They have really good designs. Yes, they have okay. really nice design clothes. So I thought that I thought that they are from UK. So I ordered it there and then without any, you know, second thoughts. So yeah, but it was no, good. Like it I would like to experience. tell everyone if you want to so, order Pat Pat, <clears throat> yeah, you can no. just go to the app or you just can go to the website and you can just change the location and you can order mm -hmm. it directly to Pakistan. It's the same price. I think it will be a bit cheaper. It will definitely be a bit cheaper. So only if you Would have saved the cost as well but anyhow next time i'll be super careful yeah. so okay Ganda, i would like to ask you that <clears throat> so how important do you think networking is in this industry like making networks making connections okay networking is very important it is the people who make you it is them you need to make connections you need to have good connections you need to network uh, a lot because uh, a lot of people are in different professions and they help you. Like, for example, um, I cannot be all in one. I cannot be an all rounder. For example, if I am mm -hmm. a consultant or if, for example, if I can buy you a product, maybe I'm not doing logistics. I need to network with other professions and other people because we interconnect. The professions interconnect. Mm -hmm. I need someone with a social media background, with a social media presence who can help me market my product. So all these mm -hmm. uh, professions are interconnected. So bef you should use your connections and you should have very good connection you, and you should keep on make, making good connections and network with different people. So when yeah, it comes to like China, we are often afraid of like, you know, communicating with them. Yeah. You know, Chinese is like, you know, totally unfamiliar language to me and most of the Pakistani people as well. Now the trend is changing. People are like considering it like one of their top languages, what they want to learn. And but, even they are um, learning English. Yes, 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 they are. Okay, they are learning English as well. But um, so the language barrier comes over there. So what is a tip that you would like to give us to maintain connections with them, especially? So do we have to like keep Google okay, right Translator now, with us right all now, the time? Right now, only or do Google we... Translate can help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> only Google, <laughs> Google Translate or only Google Translate can help you. But uh, when I was there, I used to see a lot of time because they have a lot of big customers from uh, English speaking countries. And I, mm -hmm. I used to see that yeah. at least one person in a shop you used to speak English, a broken English, but he was able to communicate. But I tell you, Chinese is the biggest barrier. Yeah. The, the language the, is, is a very big barrier in China. It still is. Because a lot of people don't, but mm -hmm. a lot now it's also changing. And people are, like I told you, at least one person, there used to be one person who could speak in English you had so yeah so the trend is changing the market That's is changing so for 
yeah so for now we have to like take um, help from the google translator okay that was great knowing about it so Kanva, uh, how can someone entering the this career stand out from the rest of the crowd like you know everyone nowadays has started a business from their homes as well someone is buying you know set clothes someone is you know, the shoe line and everybody you know wherever you see you see a lot of people now starting business from home so what's that one thing that can make you you know stand out okay um i think um that that's a bit difficult okay what what stands out me is like right now maybe if there's a lot of people maybe the practical knowledge practical knowledge yeah. maybe or yes, i have a quite a practical i have i have a deep knowledge of the market even in being in pakistan i was still learning about the chinese market i was still exploring it so like i did not leave china behind if i came back so because i had an interest so before you start anything what i do i take deep interest in my work if i'm doing something and if it interests me i don't i don't leave it i learn more and more about it i go deep down yes. and i try yeah, to find solutions to it exactly that's really important because this uh, talk has reminded me about my failed business that i started that was a jewelry line business even though i don't have like much interest but i thought that maybe it's going to be like the best idea ever but um it was failed like nobody bought my jewelry maybe it was because i was not consistent so i think the one of the thing which i find which is very important to stand out from the rest of the crowd is being consistent like you exactly. can you just like you said that you are into it that uh, you I'm find solutions and you do market research about it so can you give examples of like um, how many businesses that you have uh, like help people in starting like starting their businesses okay. like you gave I an example help. of a flower flower uh, flower business right you help someone when i was with that when i was when i was hired uh, on a debtor i was hired by a pl called mm -hmm. iman tahir she has a very nice shop in um, phase 7 with the name of the florists and uh, mm -hmm. i am she contacted me and she said like can you i need a few things from china and i've checked it online and can you order it for them i was more than happy to help her i sourced the product for her from china she sourced sourced some products she sent me and which products she was looking at were a bit expensive on alibaba and i ordered those and she wanted a little quantity and i ordered those products for her from taobao which were cheaper mm -hmm. i sent her all the qualities with prices and she chose the price and she chose the quality herself and i ordered and i delivered it at her doorstep mm -hmm. then there was another so are you talking about of, fresh flowers no these are uh, artificial flowers they were artificial, artificial flowers ones. and okay. they were um, wrapping papers they were candles and there were the mm -hmm. different things which she, she ordered there were boxes there were valentine boxes there were different gift boxes which i ordered for her from china Mm. And I was amazing. I was really so, happy, yeah. really happy. And um, then I stopped during the pandemic. And then she contacted mm. me again. Uh, but uh, by then, I was into something else. I had started uh, my Amazon course, Amazon PL course. Mm -hmm. And I was so much into my Amazon PL course. Instead of starting my own store, working working as a virtual assistant, I started finding solutions for people who were working on Amazon. because they were having mm -hmm. all the problems from china and that was my interest area and what i did i started finding solutions for them and i started cutting mm -hmm. their costs by, by inspecting and checking their products within china rather than ordering within into china. pakistan and then yeah mm -hmm. so that that was great for them like you know that's the major step like you have to test a product instead of like getting a product from china landing it in pakistan and then doing the research and if it gets failed then that's a big loss so it's better and if you it test and inspect uh, over there exactly what what if you order a product for 10 to 12000 to pakistan and mm -hmm. it's of not good quality then you have to search for another mm -hmm. manufacturer so what i used to do mm -hmm. is like i used to find the right manufacturer for them i used to order the sample to my warehouse over there it was basically my husband's warehouse he has an office over there and he has mm -hmm. a warehouse over there and they used to check okay. the product over there i used to make a chinese to check the product because they know it better what the exactly. uh, what the product quality mm -hmm. uh, better quality but the product quality is he used to check the product then he, they used to send us pictures and tell us that if the product and it was a one or two day process 
they're, they're very so fast. No, it's with not a lengthy process, yes. Mm -hmm. So Norek was the one who do two day process because they're very fast with the delivery services. And mm -hmm. then secondly, they had problem with logistics. They had problem mm -hmm. with exactly. customization. That's so I used to, uh, yeah. So I used to negotiate and find such suppliers, and I used to because I since I told you I know people over there. I had no uh, quite logistic companies and shipping companies. I used to connect so them have, with yeah, the so. different agents over there. Even if I was not, I was connecting them with people. Mm -hmm. So they got their work done. Mm -hmm. And negotiation with a logistic so, company is in the buyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my next question would be like, um, is there a misconception about e-commerce? Yes, I told that earlier. The misconception about e-commerce is wholesale is cheaper and retail is expensive, which is not. Mm -hmm. You just need to do your research. You should know the websites. You should know the places where you need to buy. Like I mentioned that Taobao and um, JD, these are the two main mm -hmm. uh, e-commerce websites over there where you can buy in um, retail. Okay, yeah. So that, uh, that's interesting. So what I would like to ask you next. Now I'm thinking about questions because we have covered a lot, but uh, what is your most important goal in the next five years if I had to ask you this? Okay, what I want to do is like, I want to start my own e-commerce store. I want to enlist mm -hmm. all the best manufacturers on it, selective manufacturers mm -hmm. on it, and mm -hmm. I want to enlist uh, the top 10 or 20 logistic companies on that. So we, our people are at ease for people who want to work on eBay, Etsy, who want to have their own uh, e-commerce website in Pakistan. I want to make things easy for them. And especially- That's women, a great idea. I yeah. don't want them to struggle a lot. If they have a Chinese, uh, uh, language barrier in China, I want to translate Taobao in English mm. and make it a Pakistani version, so they can um, easily buy easily without any hesitation. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I have an advice. I want all the women over there. If you start your e-commerce business, don't hesitate and start. Give yourself a try. At least give yourself a try and involve your children in it empower your children if you're empowering yourself empower your children because this thing How i do learned that? In, like what do you mean by this this thing i've learned in china like they never used to hire people from outside they used to all the all the family used to work in one shop even the mm -hmm. children so i want you to empower your children help your children teach your children they learn within the home what they will learn from you they will never learn it from an academy or anywhere if you're starting a business, exactly. involves them. What the a great children insight. are very good. Uh, the children are very good with um, social media these days. Use them for social media. Mm -hmm. I I want to. to I, keep, I not just to keep them busy, but yeah, but to educate them as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We'll be busy, mm -hmm. and uh, and you're not going to uh, hire an extra help. You don't have to pay an extra person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like this is a plus plus. That's point. a great. Yeah, this is a great yeah. insight. So uh, if I had to ask you one question, like this question remains in my head most of the time. So what do you think opportunities or hard work plays an important role in a person's success? Like some people often think that, you know, she has gotten an opportunity or he has gotten an opportunity. He hasn't worked hard for that. It comes in a plate. I don't know. So do you think that opportunity sometimes matters or hard work is, you know, something I that is most will, important? I think both go silent both go together because mm -hmm. if I have an opportunity and I have take I, and I'm just looking at it and I'm not doing anything opportunity is not going to give me anything I need mm -hmm. to do my hard yeah. work I need to, need my, I need to do my hard work I need to do my working to use that opportunity like how am I going to use that opportunity my opportunity so, is yeah, only going to help me if I work on it if, if I work, yeah, exactly. work for it Mm -hmm. As the opportunity so will remain even if is. you get yeah even if you get an opportunity and you're not going to work hard so you know that opportunity is definitely a waste for you because you know you definitely lose you it need, you need to work hard there is success only comes with hard work i've come a long way i started in 2011 mm -hmm. i guess i started with a small thing and i i, I don't know where i am today 
and I just couldn't yeah. believe it. I'm you. Feeling. You are one of our yeah. You are one of our top auditions, and we are proud to have you as our quality control manager as well. So you are a great asset not only for like uh, other businesses that you're doing. You're a great asset for our data as well. And I'm so glad that uh, we. I have an honor of interviewing you. And uh, you. people you must so have people. Yeah. People must have got so much, you know, so many insights from you. So before we end the session, I would like to like you know ask the last question. Uh, if you do, you have any suggestion or advice you want to give girls and ladies, especially young girls out there, that how they can you know succeed in their lives? Does age matters or does education matters when it comes to like you know being successful in your field? Okay. What do you education, think? education don't matter. Uh, I would like to uh, tell you that I uh, I just I've just done an associate degree in accounts and finance. Um, I am I ha I have no higher education, and uh, what I used uh, over the time was my skills. I focused on my skills. I worked on my skills, mm -hmm. and today where I am, it is because of my skills. As long as the degree is degree is very important, I believe it is important. But along with that, skills is very also very important. Like, don't say that that you're not much much educated or you don't have a good degree or you don't. Uh, for example, you studied psychology and you say, oh, how can I do business? Because I'm not, you can. There is nothing you cannot. I was a science student. So I just did an accounts and finance. I don't think my degree helped me anywhere. Uh, it was all my mm -hmm. skills, my knowledge, and my interest. Mm -hmm. And, and nowadays, uh, social media is, you know, is so handy that you can get, you know, information regarding everything. So whatever is your interest, you can. Online. Yeah, you learn, don't even have to go YouTube. to an academy. You don't even have to go to an institute. If you mm -hmm. know about something, you can just go on YouTube. There are you have Coursera. I have been a digital marketing course on Coursera. You have Coursera. You have a, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, options to learn now. Mm -hmm. it so no excuse it. there is yeah. no excuse. so nowadays no it. nobody has an, any excuse yes because you know internet is open for all so we can use it for like uh, you know for good exactly. purposes once well. you learn, so better uh, once educate you learn, yourself yeah. exactly once you learn a new skill it will open another door for you it will mm -hmm. open another it, it will keep on opening doors for you yes exactly degree can you know make you enter to some sort of institution but what exactly. makes you go through your life is, or what makes you successful is how you, how much skills you have, uh, or what you are good at. So and for skills, polish your you skills. Exactly for skills, you don't need an age. My son, he's ten years old. I would, I would want him to learn different skills. I would want him to learn skills, yeah. as well. Yes, exactly. Like, Not just like we have like typical. Uh, it's okay, Ganga. <laughs> That's all right. That's a live session. We can. Yeah, we got to see her as well. That's all right. So, yeah. So it was really nice having you. And you have given us great insights. And I hope our audience has really liked the session as well. We got to know what an e-commerce is. Yeah, what an e-commerce is, how China markets work. And not just that, you have also given us an insight that we can also contact you. You can become our agent Definitely over there. And we can, yeah. So it was really great. I'm always there you. to advise and, and I'm always yeah. there to help. I really want and thank you for uh, power. yeah exactly and you have also mentioned a great point that just not degrees but polish your skills work on your communication skills exactly. interpersonal skills you know uh, get you know tech savvy become tech savvy because nowadays uh, people yes, are into like, it. it's a demand technical of, it's skills a demand are really important yes it's a demand of the time there's no turning around there's no you know going back and last thing with that, I would uh, end the session that no excuses. Now you have no excuses. No excuse, now we no have excuses. an example. Yeah, yeah, we have a great example. I want everyone. And she, I want ev she has said to give. Yeah, you have an incredible journey that thought. you have shared with us. Yeah. I want everyone to give one, yes, try. one try. Don't get scared with yes, failures. With, I had a lot yeah. of failures. I had a lot of failures in life. And I've stepped yes, up exactly. with Every time I we pay, all have that I a certain share. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is I the great uh, insight. And with that, I would like to end my session. Thank you so much, Thank Anwar, for being Thank here you, and sharing, uh, sharing such. Yeah, no problem at all. It was pleasure having you. Thank you Thank all you so for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.